The following is a selected video from MasterTheContent.com where you will find an extensive video library of lectures for a variety of standardized admission tests. We offer over 600 hours of detailed video lectures for a multitude of standardized tests. Use our interactive in-lecture table of contents to find specific topics of interest. Work through numerous in-lecture examples to help you internalize concepts. To learn more, visit MasterTheContent.com. Your career, our passion. So what I want us to do next is move on and actually do uh, one more example involving a dihybrid cross so we can very firmly solidify our understanding of this pattern of inheritance. So the example on the screen uh, requires us to do the following. So we're required to show the genotype of the F1, the first filial generation, which results from the cross of a pure breeding tall purple plant with a pure breeding short white plant. Cross the F1 offspring and determine the phenotypic and genotypic ratios of the F2 generation. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to determine the genotype uh, of the gametes for the parental generation. Now, we can use a capital T and a capital P to represent the dominant alleles for the tall and purple flowered phenotypes respectively. And similarly, we can use a small t and a small p to represent the recessive alleles for the short and white uh, flower color phenotypes. Now, because the parental generation consists of uh, true or pure breeding varieties, each parent can only produce gametes that are homozygous for these two different traits we're looking at. So this is our cross right here. This is what it's going to look like. We have a plant um, that is tall and purple. Those are the dominant traits being crossed with another plant that is white and short. Those are the recessive traits. So capital P for tallness, small t for shortness, uh, capital P for purple flower color, and small p for white flower color, which is a recessive trait. So after segregation, so if we're forming gametes or gametes are being formed uh, from this cross, each of these um, All of the gametes that are produced by each of these parental varieties, each of these pure lines, uh, will be heterozygous uh, for either the dominant or the recessive phenotype. So all of the gametes that are produced from each of these parents, they will all be heterozygous, and they will all be heterozygous for either the dominant or the recessive phenotypes. So as you can see, I'm just writing down all possible combinations. Remember, we're dealing with independent assortment. It happens in the first um, cross as well, involving the pure breeding parental varieties. So as you can see, the only two possible uh, allele combinations and gametes for the dominant one is going to be that. For the dominant variety, those are that's the only kind of gamete we'll get. And for the recessive pure breeding variety, we will have all our gametes having that allelic combination, having that genotypic combination, that combination of alleles uh, in the gametes. So, because all of these uh, gametes are the same, it makes us very simple. It makes it very simple for us to actually determine what the genotype of the F1 generation will be. So we only need one of each because they're all the same. So if we crossed one from the dominant uh, variety, from the dominant parental stale strain with a gamete uh, from the recessive parental strain, uh, strain, so let's say for instance that was the male and this was the female, we would produce an F1 generation that had the following genotype. So the parent with the dominant traits produces gametes which carry alleles for the tall and purple phenotypes. So capital P, capital T, capital P. And the parent with the recessive traits produces gametes which carry alleles for the short and white flower phenotypes, small t, small p. So when we are determining the genotype of the F1 generation, all we have to do is cross um, one of those from either parents, and that is going to be our genotype for the F1 generation. So all F1 plants, all plants of the first filial generation will have the same 
genotype, they'll have the same genotypic combination of alleles, which will look something like this. Now, um, one thing I also want to mention that it is standard practice to keep uh, allelic pairs together when you are describing genotypes in this manner. manner. For instance, um, another way you could write this is this way. But um, sorry, another way you could write that is by keeping the allelic pairs together. Sorry, actually, I did it the wrong way the first time. How I meant to write that was as follows. This is how I meant to write it. Okay. So another way you could write that is this way. But you will never see that form of notation in literature because the convention is to keep allelic pairs or the alleles of a gene together in that notation. So as you can see, the two alleles that determine uh, height, tallness are kept together and the alleles that determine flower color are also kept together in that notation. So the genotype of the F1 generation ends up being that. Okay, so that is the genotype of the F1 generation. Now, in the third step, we are actually going to determine the genotype of the gametes for the F1 generation. Now, remember, according to Mendel's second law, during gamete formation, each allele can assort independently of the others, and it can combine with either member of another allelic pair. So, all the F1 plants have the same genotype, which is this. And what the law of independent assortment is telling us is that each of these alleles can assort independent of the others, right? And in doing so, it can combine with either member of another allelic pair, of another gene pair. So this dominant allele for this allele that's dominant, the allele that produces tallness, can actually combine with the allele, the dominant allele for purple flower color to produce a phenotype or a genotype that looks like that. And it can also combine with the allele or the recessive allele for white flower color to produce that genotype. Similarly, um, the recessive allele for tallness, so the recessive allele that produces shortness, can combine with the dominant allele for color, which produces purple color, and can also combine with the recessive allele for color, which produces white flowered uh, plants, to produce that genotype. So these are all the possible combination of alleles, or the combination uh, of alleles we can see in the gametes that are produced from the F1 generation. So all you have to do from this point onwards is take all of these individuals, because these are our gametes. Okay, that's independent assortment has taken place during gamete formation, and the gametes we have have these alle allelic combinations. So all you're going to do is take all those possibilities, put them in a Panette grid, like so. So obviously one side of the grid representing the male or the father, and the opposite side of the grid representing the female or the mother or vice versa and this is what you are going to get. So what you're going to do is you're going to cross all those genotypes in this Panette grid to get all the possible allele combinations that we would see in what is the F2 generation, the second filial generation, and that would give you something that looks something like this. So as you can see in the F2 generation, we have the 9 to 3 to 3 one ratio. So we have nine plants that are tall and purple. We have three plants that are tall and white. We have another three that are short and purple. And we have one that is short, so only one that has both recessive traits one that is short and white. So as you can see, the 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 uh, phenotypic ratio is observed in this dihybrid cross as well. So all in all, we have nine different genotypes. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, some of which occur more than once as you can see in that grid. And these nine genotypes produce four different phenotypes, tall and purple, nine of those in a ratio of nine, tall and white in a ratio of three, short and purple in a ratio of three, and short and white in a ratio of one. So the genotypic, uh, or those are all the genotypes that will produce just those four phenotypes that we observe um, in the second filial generation, in the F2 generation. So that's what a dihybrid cross looks like. That's what a cross involving the simultaneous um, involvement or the simultaneous crossing of two different characters, two different traits looks like. So what we're going to do now that we've covered what dihybrid crosses are all about is we're going to move on and we're going to talk about um,